with the momentum going, let's welcome Mr. Marty Levenstein. Come right up, would you? Good evening. Ah, uh, how are you? How are you? Are you guys in a good mood? I'm in a good mood. Well, you gotta be. It's Carpeteria's 25th anniversary. Oh, there was a big celebration. Did anybody go? I was there. It was a lot of fun. All the carpets were hitting on each other. And Ansel Four was trying to pick up on a deep shag. All the Persian rugs were huddled in a corner by themselves. Nobody wanted to talk to them. I picked up a little sheepskin. I had fun. A few rug burns, but what the hell? It was worth it. You know. What's going on? So many things. In the news, uh, little Richard was in a car accident recently. Uh, he suffered a fractured right leg, bruised ribs, and a concussion. When asked how he was feeling, little Richard replied, Ow! <laughs> I love that one. That's, what else? Ronald Reagan, vowed, Ronald Reagan vowed we will not have a tax increase in his lifetime. Pretty generous offer for a man playing tag with the Grim Reaper. I figure we got about six months. And we've got all these great things going now. We've got uh, Band-Aid... Wake Aid, Live Aid, all these great causes. I think that's, that's nice. That's 80s. That's hip. I read where uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Ben Vereen, and Bill Cosby are getting together to do a benefit for the unhip white youth of America. They're calling it Kool-Aid. <laughs> and what else? How about this guy? Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, huh? The Bhagwan. There's a handsome fellow. I'm waiting to see who discovers the razor first, him or Willie Nelson. This man preaches free love. If I look like that, I'd preach free love too. And his whole wardrobe consists of sheets. Sheets. I guess it's convenient because after a good night's sleep, he's dressed for the day. And he owns 93, 93 Rolls Royces. I guess 7-Eleven pays a little better than we thought. And I heard now where he's going to be doing television commercials to try and recruit people to his cult. I'm hoping they're going to be like Cal Worthington. If you want to lose your mind, come see Bhagwan. No more personality guaranteed. Come see Bhagwan. Give your money, give your wife. You'll no longer run your life. Come see Bhagwan. Come see Bhagwan. Come see Bhagwan. See you here. Say habla espanol. Thank you. Thank you, the Bhagwan. If you ever down, just say Bhagwan five times and it will lift your spirit so high you won't know what to do with yourself. Bhagwan, Bhagwan, Bhagwan. Uh, in case you haven't already guessed it, I am from New York. Uh, but I'm living in California. I love it out here because it's nice and tan, nice and sunny. You get tan. In New York, you don't get tan. You get black and blue. I went back there recently and no matter where you travel in the world, once you get off the plane in Brooklyn, there are certain sounds, certain catchphrases that let you know you're home immediately. For instance, drop the weapon and spread them. Or this one. Yo, Angelo, you want to go out and get lucky tonight or what? Tony, did you see the garbanzos on that one? Maron. <laughs> and these are just the girls talking. Picking up women is different there. Out here, you go into a club, the big pickup line is, uh, what's your sign? In New York, you've got to cut through all that. So when I see a woman I like, I walk right up to her and I say, hey, what's your blood type? Because you see, in New York on a date, there's a good chance you're going to be mugged. And if I end up on a concrete bleeding, Capricorn with Virgo rising is not going to do me a bit of good. A positive is going to save my butt. Yeah, it's the truth. And I love when the women ask me my sign. You know, I tell them, I say, I'm a Gemini with a penis rising. Come around back, I'll show you what house my moon is in. You know? I got a couple, of, a couple of planets that are orbiting my rising sign, so we'll have some fun. Come and check that out. Schools are another difference. Uh, in New York, you've got NYU, Columbia, turning out doctors, lawyers, business people. You know, and Out here, you've got UCLA, which stands for Under Continuous Leisurely Activity. Oh, it's true. Just go on campus. You see this. Todd, you want to go to class? No, let's throw a Frisbee around for a couple of hours. Kick a hacky sack. You know, the ones that are serious hop on their mopeds and go to Aura Adjusting 101. 
They major in Shatsu massage, get a degree in being one with the universe. USC, under similar circumstances, it's uh, interesting. So I came out here from New York and I got married. Oh no, hold it down. <laughs> I'm no longer married. Uh, you missed the cue, you were supposed to applaud on that one. Some guys refer to their former wives as ex-wives. You know, my ex-wife this, my ex-wife that. I like to refer to mine as a Y wife. I don't know why I married her in the first place. Well, don't get me wrong. She was sweet. She was. She, but, you know, she tried. She wasn't great in the kitchen, though. She tended to overcook things. Her specialty was chicken jerky. I'd buy her pots and pans. She'd make planters out of them. She made a great three-minute wandering Jew. Delicious. And sex was almost non-existent. Oh, she was all for premarital sex. It was post-marital sex where she put her foot down. And the whole two years of marriage, she suffered from PMS, which stands for Postpone Marty's Sex. <laughs> yeah, she was a shiksa. That's Jewish for only on New Year's and months with the letter X. I tell her she's a sex god. She told me she was an atheist. <laughs> you like this one. And oral sex? Forget it. I had to cook a hot dogs just so she wouldn't forget the concept. And something would always get in the way of sex. I'd be feeling I'd say, sweetheart, how about tonight? The big smile, she'd say, not tonight. I have a yeast infection. <laughs> she was proud of this. She had so many yeast infections, we could open the bakery. And if it wasn't, that was a contact lens. She'd put them in and take them out, in and out, in and out. The contacts got more action than I did. I wanted to become a Bausch and Lomb salesman. Once I was a diaphragm, in and out, same thing. You know why it's such a good form of birth control? Because by the time you ladies get it in there with all the cream and jelly, who wants to make love? I want to get a jar of peanut butter and make sandwiches. I already got the bread from the yeast thing. If I get to give milk, I'd have lunch. Uh, well, she's doing okay now. She's remarried. and uh, In fact, I called to invite her and her new husband out to dinner. And she said, no thanks, we're eating in tonight. And Bob's cooking hot dogs. Ah, there is a God. Good luck, pal, wherever you are. I don't know. I don't understand women. Women and pets, dogs, cats especially. Any women have cats? Guys, if you date a woman with a cat, be prepared for hell because they will give more attention to this little furry thing than they will us. It's like this. Kitty, 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 kitty. Come here, kitty, 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 kitty. Right? You women can pet these things for hours. On the head, under the neck, behind the ears, in the back, little butts go in the air. Guys, if we want a massage, it's like, uh, one rub. What do you got to do for affection? Call fur balls? Be finicky about what you eat? Shit in a box? What do you got to do? I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't understand a lot of things. White singers get to me. I'm born in Brooklyn, the projects. My, my roots are Motown, you know, and uh, I'm kind of embarrassed by white singers. For instance, we had Neil Diamond, right? This was Neil Diamond's big hit. Love on the rocks. Then we had Joe Cocker. Love lift us up where we belong. Now we have Bruce Springsteen, who's wonderful, but it's like, we are the world. We are, you know, why don't these three guys get together, get a group rate, and go to the Schick Center for terminal sore throat? My God, you know, <laughs> David Lee Roth, you know, just a gigolo, that's a real crooner for you. Madonna, like a virgin. <laughs> like a virgin, but not quite. <laughs> so I think what these performers should do, the singers and the bands, they should, they should switch names. And this would tell us a lot more about their personal character. For instance, Madonna, she could be Cheap Trick. Boy George could be ACDC. Mick Jagger, UB40, and my favorite. <laughs> Barry White could be the barge. I don't make Barry, fun of Barry White, because if it wasn't for Barry White, I never would have gotten laid the first time. So, baby, baby, yeah. Oh, God. I was in another singer. I was in uh, the new Bob Dylan music video. I don't know if anybody's seen this. I haven't seen it yet, but I understand it's like, don't blink, sneeze, or get snow on your television, because you'll miss me. But it was great working with Bob Dylan. I, I 
found out why he chose the name Dylan. Because it stands for do your lewds and nod. <laughs> the man has absolutely no energy. It's amazing. This guy does not take naps. He takes comas. He took one. The, the, the rest of the band stopped putting daisies around him. They thought he was gone. I mean, you put him in bed with my ex-wife, they, they make turtle sex look exciting. You know? And he talks the same way he sings. We went up to the lunch truck. He ordered his meal. It was like, I'll have some roast beef and some green peas. And don't forget the mashed potatoes, please. <laughs> his dog was there. Bow, wow. Bow, wow. But it was great working with him. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, he came up to me, put his arm around me in a brotherly embrace and said, thanks, Bob. I really appreciate that. You helped my career. White singers get to me. I'm telling you, I go to a club last night. I paid $10 to get in, right? The guy is one of these folk singer guys, you know, comes up to the stage, tunes up for 15 minutes, finally comes to the microphone and says this, I'd like to do a song for you now. It's an original tune, and it goes something like this. What does he mean it goes something like this? I paid $10 to get in. I want to hear exactly how it goes. What, kind of, what if a doctor had this attitude? Hey, Marty, time for that operation and the incision. It goes something like this. <clears throat> That's the 80s. The products we have now, almost home cookies. <laughs> almost home cookies? What's next, nearly baked bread? Practically fresh fish. And Air Cal has a service. Almost first class service. <laughs> you get a stewardess from Denny's. That's a cheap restaurant for you guys from Australia, yeah. <laughs> they serve almost home cookies, and the pilot gets on and says this Good evening, and welcome aboard flight 101 to Hawaii. I'm your pilot. I'd like to fly you there, and the flight goes something like this. Makes you feel real secure, doesn't it? Uh, I saw a commercial last night, I gotta tell you. Oh, it's for Pet Boys, you know the Pet Boys? This guy is in, in Pet Boys, pushing a wagon and says this. I just did all my Christmas shopping at Pet Boys. Oh, I'm sorry I'm not a relative. I sure could use an oil filter this holiday season, you know. Give me a pack of spark plugs so I can decorate the tree, pal. It's <laughs> unbelievable stuff. Uh, what else? Since I'm out in L.A., I had some odd jobs. There's a male exotic dance club out here called Chippendales. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, you know that club? Yeah, I worked there. Oh, yeah, sure I did. Yeah, I did. I was the only skinny guy that they hired. It was amazing. It's like in the dressing room, all these muscle guys are walking around like this, you know, looking in the mirror. You see these biceps? 200 pounds of dynamite in these biceps. See these pecs? 500 pounds of dynamite, you know? I'd say, great, pal, but with a short fuse like that, you're liable to blow at any minute. <laughs> What's amazing, they would line us up out there, right? And I'd be st standing next to these big muscle guys. It looked like an ad for Charles Atlas, before and after. You know? These guys would go out there and dance. Women would throw their money, house keys, credit cards. Me, they'd throw a corned beef sandwich. I didn't get tips, I got protein shakes. Double coupons for ground beef at Rouse. And we had to wear these cuffs, collars, bow tie, no shirt, black pants. I looked like a well-dressed stickball bat. But they asked me to do the Chippendales calendar. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't get a whole month. I got a couple of days in February. <laughs> but it paid well. It was $100 an inch. I picked up a quick 50 uh, those of you that know me know I don't like to talk about politics. But I got to tell you, I went to uh, this, on this last campaign, Walter Mondale's out campaigning, primarily Jewish part of Los Angeles, and he's wearing a yarmulke, skull cap. For the brothers, that's a funny little hat Jewish people wear, right? And this made me think, if he's going to go into a Jewish neighborhood and wear a yarmulke, will he stop at nothing to get votes? I mean, if he wants a black vote, does he go into Inglewood carrying a ghetto blaster? Say, baby, what's happening here? My name is Walter. Vote for me. I'll set you free. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or the Latino vote cruises into East L.A. with a bandana. Orale, I say. Que paseando, me. Me llamo Walter. Dame tu vote. 
I promise you two chalupes in every garage and a taco number three salad. Orale. Chinatown, he puts on a walk. I don't even want to think what he does to get the gay vote. Talk about bending over backwards for your constituency. Uh, West Hollywood is now a city incorporated, primarily gay community. Yeah, applaud that. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, they're going to have some new laws there now, you know. They're going to have heterosexual pride day once a year. So we can wear suits and regular clothing. They're going to change all the street signs to one way. <laughs> we know what way that is, don't we? Hmm. What else is going on? Oh, I want to talk about one more thing. You like the Lakers? Laker fans? Yeah, me too. I went to a game, and you forget how big these guys are. I went into the forum. I'm standing on the floor next to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and I can't believe how big this guy is. This guy has got arms that go on for days. He could hug a condominium if he wanted to. And his head is this big. His head is this big. And fists, the biggest fists I've ever seen in my life. And I know this for a fact because he beat the shit out of me for making fun of his big head and long arms. He's got a great left hook. And driving up to the forum, I saw a sign that said, Welcome to Inglewood, City of Champions. <laughs> yeah, right. That's like, Welcome to Brooklyn, City of Proper English. <laughs> welcome to San Francisco, City of Real Men. Welcome to Lebanon, Land of Even Temper. <sighs> well, on a musical note, I'd like to end with something that I call a comedy rap. So if you feel it, black guys help the white guys. And uh, it goes like this. Good evening, ladies, and good evening, gents. I'm glad you came to this comedy event. My name's been Marty, and I was here to say I was born in Brooklyn, Sheepset Bay. It's the comedy rap. The comedy rap is the comedy rap. The comedy rap. I came a long way to make you smile, and I did it different, and I did it with style. No piss, no shit, no motherfuckers. That nasty stuff, baby, it's for suckers. The comedy rap. The comedy rap is the comedy rap. The comedy rap. I had some joke stories, characters too, and turn your attitude to pink from blue. Coming to you tonight from a club we all love. Hey, Mr. Wake Up, lady, give him a shove. It's the comedy rap. The comedy rap is the comedy rap. The comedy rap. I was born June 4th, 1957. I weigh 155 and I'm 5'11. My eyes are brown and so is my hair. I know what you're thinking. What the hell we care? But it's the comedy rap. The comedy rap is the comedy rap. The comedy rap. There's Carlin and Pryor, both great, no doubt. And now there's Marty Lee. Goddamn, watch out. I know you're thinking it'd have been fun to heckle. You didn't do it because I'm on with an eight-inch schmeckle. It's the comedy rap. The comedy rap is the comedy rap. The comedy rap. So once again, good evening one, good evening all. Get yourselves ready. Going to have a ball. Call your waitress, have a smoke, get a drink, sit tight. Get yourselves ready for the rest of the night. It's the comedy rap. The comedy rap is the comedy rap. The comedy rap. Yeah. Good night. Funny man, Marty Levenstein doing a good job.